We're still at the March 7th meeting. This is the part two of the South Coast Air Quality Management District, where they're debating allowing diesel generators for hospitals to be excluded from the diesel regulations that are uh, supposedly going to be extended to everybody else. Would smaller units be less money for these particular traps? Uh, uh, is there a range as to dollars? And, and, and where I'm they, going with that is I'm the wondering. The staff will provide the range in a second, uh, Mayor. And, but, but the answer to your question is yes, if it's a smaller should, trap, and, and, it's cheaper, we, bigger traps more expensive. Do, do we have a cap? Um, and would a cap make any sense? In other words, if they're going to have to spend more than a certain amount of money, uh, does the rule have a provision to say, you know, if it's going to be more than that? No, although the, although the, uh, board generally ignored the comment about the need for alternatives to diesel generators and not to invest in diesel generators for hospital backup, and of course in other installations also, there still was some uh, insightful response by the board, a tiny bit of acknowledgement that there was something to wrong with this proposal that they all approved unanimously. I think too it would probably be helpful to have, as part of that annual report, some report on the costs incurred uh, by the, the healthcare industry because their estimates seem to be wildly in exceedance of what our estimates are as, a, as, as a, in the staff report. We'll be happy to do that as well. Okay, and the final thing is, is my one concern about this rule, and I think it's a more general concern about uh, how we regulate air toxics, is that there, I don't see anything in here that protects us against the cumulative impacts of multiple sources, multiple facilities, multiple uh, mobile sources and everything else with regard to um, the public health protections against air toxics. And I don't know how to fix this rule. I think it's a bigger question, but I wanted to raise it just so that people knew that I was aware of that and that I have uh, very deep concerns about our inability to, through our current regulatory program to protect against cumulative impacts. We appreciate that concern. The, the next item is is volatile fuel delivery from gas stations. You know, and here here the argument is: should gas stations be required to guard against uh, the release of valuable chemicals into the air from their dispensing equipment? Now, this completely skirts the issue. Of course, if you don't have gasoline cars or if you have zero emission vehicles, not only do you not have refineries, you also don't have the need for these nitpicking controls. And they go on and on and on about these, this, what they're going to do about this regulation. Now, I, I figure each minute of the Air Resource Board meeting probably costs something like a million dollars in staff time and reporting. So they're just basically burning money for what I consider to be nothing in return. Simply procrastinated, could not demonstrate that compliance had been beyond their reasonable control, a key finding necessary for the hearing board to grant relief. Over 400 GDFs ended up operating under orders for abatement, and around 100 voluntarily shut down until their equipment was upgraded. Order penalties were tiered depending on GDF phase of completion and ranged from $30 to $6 a day. $60 a day, sorry. Next slide. Now we face the phase two upgrades involving dispensing aspect of the equipment. All, All complete hogwash because they're basically arguing about something which shouldn't be in, on the plate at all if there really were a zero emission vehicle mandate. So this whole argument, which went on and on and on, is complete nonsense. ...system since 2005, and existing facilities by state law must complete upgrades by next April 1 in 2009. Much must be done in the next 13 months, and we do not want to see a repeat of the phase one debacle. <laughs> Consequently, staff recommends that South Coast adopt incremental compliance schedules. It's difficult to recall installers to their facility once their work is completed. Instead, the installer would still be handy as performance tests are conducted, ready to, re to rectify problems. Next slide. And we've incorporated them for rules. Okay, the, the, the real person who's going to be talking about this thing is somebody the board is on a first name basis with. And that's what they call WISPA. That's Western States Petroleum Association. So you can see the entire board takes a deferential and almost servile view when they, when they talk to the representative from Western States Petroleum. He's a very affable and a very, very uh, pleasant person, but represents 
as well as ghastly ogre of an industry. My name is Jody Muller. I'm the manager of Western States Petroleum Association's South Coast office. Our member companies own and operate some of the gasoline distribution facilities in the South Coast Air Basin that will be impacted by the amendments to this rule before you. As Carol mentioned, you received a letter this week commenting on the rule, and I do apologize for the fact that the letter only went out on Wednesday. In conclusion, I want to thank staff for the beneficial change that they made. Mr. Chairman, I do have a couple of questions for uh, Joe Shane. Not the first being, did you bring any baby pictures? Yes. Um, 